Uh, so we're going to get started with some questions. Uh, are we not starting with like, telling people which episode this is? Okay, tell us which episode it is. Well, that was your job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode seven. Seven. You got that right. Okay. I I've lost count. They all blend in together at this point. <laughs> A blur of fun. <laughs> blur it's just fun. been nonstop fun. Yeah. And now you're even wearing my shirt. Yeah. What does it say? Surely not everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> I, just, I, know. I bought it for you and then I said, can I borrow that? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be of a certain vintage to yeah. really appreciate that yeah, shirt. I some think. people should know that. That's right, yeah. yeah. What year? 75? Yeah, it'd be mid-70s, yeah. Yeah, for something sure. like that, okay. When everybody was kung fu fighting. That's right. <laughs> uh, all right, so questions from the mailbag. So Wait. did we establish what episode? Yes, we said it was episode 7. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions from the mailbag. Yes. So you got a question from a viewer who wanted to know what action was on a guitar. Uh, oh yeah, that was uh, Anne. No, Tracy. Tracy from Tracy from South, South Africa. Africa. Okay. I know, like that, like from South Africa. It's got to be the long, my the award for the longest distance uh, request. Uh, very simple. Action is, actually, you probably know what action is, do you? I do know what action okay. is. Okay, action is simply uh, the, how close the strings are to the, uh, to the fret. Uh, so if you have good action, uh, you, you don't have to press very hard. If the action is, is, is higher, if the action is higher, you, you have to press harder into the, the strings onto, uh, onto the fret. But if it's, if it's a good action, then you can move your hands up and down the, the, uh, the fretboard easily. That's the trick, is you want as good action without the, the, uh, without the string buzzing on the uh, individual little, uh, the, the frets here. Oh, okay. You have a new prop on set here, Leo. What is this next Well, week? this is, uh, this is a, uh, remember we talked about uh, uh, analog tape. This is a Fostex R8, and it was the thing in the, uh, in the uh, mid 80s uh, probably all the way into the uh, the early 90s it was eight track on uh, on a just a quarter inch of tape it's the tape is really narrow quarter inch of tape uh, and I could put let's see uh, four songs so probably four times four six maybe 16 18 minutes uh, of uh, of of tape but this this little guy was oh he was it was just such a, a fabulous little unit um, but like I was saying last week, once you start working with digital and being able to just uh, uh, have you know hundreds of songs on a, on a hard drive, uh, but I'm I'm I would like to bring it back out again someday. Like it was even going out to the buy the Ampex Grandmaster 457 tape. It was like oh wow. It was uh, it, it was and I got I got boxes <laughs> of these tapes. So I would like to pull it out and see if I can make it. Uh, See what it, if it's still workable. If not, I can maybe uh, put up put it on pause for a sec. I'll be right back. So then I would uh, we would do our recording eight track. Now we don't like we only have eight tracks. So it's, you you could bounce it down. You could go okay. I'll put four tracks down onto one track, and that's what like like would recording did back in the 60s and in the 70s is so, okay we have you know and but then once once you have those on that track you're committed to that that's why when you hear like beatles uh songs and it's oh there's it's all kind of all on one thing because they would have okay we only have four tracks so we'll record four things uh bounce it onto something else then bring that bounce that onto another uh, uh tape device and then bring all that back but now when you adjust that you're adjusting everything at the uh, the one time um but then when I, we would go to make a master, we would make a master onto this uh, DAT machine. So this is this is now the starting of digital digital audio tape, uh, and this this was state of the art as well. And oh, this was, this little guy was so sweet. I uh, did a lot of recording onto this uh, little DAT machine uh, that cost me a fortune, and now it's probably worth its weight. In, not actually not even worth its weight in plastic. <laughs> That's how it's, uh, if I were yelling, I'd have needed a microphone. <laughs> Uh, tell us about the microphones you have on your lap, Leo. Okay, so people always ask me, oh, like, uh, you know, what microphones do you use? What's what's a good microphone for someone starting out, or you know, uh, that's not too crazy expensive? So I have a, a few here. Um, this is the SM58. Uh, every musician would recognize this. Very popular microphone, good for uh, good for vocals. 
Uh, I've got this back in like the, the mid 80s. It was my very first microphone and you, it's still working. It's still fine. It's the microphone uh, that Roger Daltrey, Roger Daltrey would, would use. Right? Swing around. He would and... swing around because he knew, you know, we would wrap the tape on it, I'm sure. Um, good solid microphone. Uh, then it, the uh, its little brother was the SM57. This has got used more for uh, uh, guitar amps. Uh, I use one of these uh, on the bottom of the snare drum uh, for loud, loud instruments, loud vocals. You know, uh, these these mics are good. These are uh, dynamic mics, so they don't require any uh, any power. I'll get to the the powered ones, um, but. Uh, they're they're good solid uh, good solid mics and they're still being used uh, today. I don't know Eddie Van Halen recorded uh, lots with the SM57. Then we have um, I want to have one more dynamic. Uh, it's also a Shure. Those were Shures. This is also a Shure 55. Uh, I just got it because it just looks cool. That looks uh, like Buddy Holly would have. Yeah, very into that Elvis, microphone. very fifties. Yeah. But you see, these are so popular. Even the symbol gets used on. There's so many like podcasts and things. Mm -hmm. You'll see the symbol of this uh, this this mic. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool mic. What I really like about it as well as a has a little on off switch. So mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm using it in the studio for a rehearsal, I can just re you know turn it off and I I can uh, I don't have to be amplified at at that uh, at that time. And that looks like a mic that would generally stay in a stand, right? You're not yeah. holding it in your hand. Uh, the no, the there other. are some. There are some. It's not really comfortable because it's got a lot of sharp edges and you might accidentally turn off, but I, I know there are some uh, some musicians that walk around, some singers walk around and, and, and hold it, so, okay. and they can, but it is a really popular, you put this on a nice silver stand, uh, a nice chrome uh, stand, and uh, it looks uh, it looks fabulous. There's a there's a more expensive version that has a blue inside it, um, but this uh, this is a good it's a, it's a decent little mic. So then we get into the dynamic uh, sorry the condenser mics. So I have a a good vocal mic uh, for the studio. You wouldn't ever use something like this live, um, but in the uh, in the studio now it requires a 48 volt uh, phantom power. But it's a condenser, so it already has uh, uh, it, it because the, the 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 membrane, the diaphragm that's inside these are a little more sensitive. That's why they can pick up so much better sounds, and they're really good for vocals in a studio. Same as the AKG 414. Like that's a that's a beautiful mic. Uh, but same thing, condense uh, a condenser requiring uh, phantom power. But they're both uh, both uh, great mics. So for this podcast. People have probably been seeing this microphone in in the picture yeah, all the time. Yeah. That's what we're using yeah. to record the sound for this uh, for this series of, of episodes. And it's like you know you're four four feet away from it, and it's uh, it's picking it up uh, very well. Some of these mics, like this particular mic, has some settings. Uh, it can have different patterns, so it can have like it, you can record from both sides or just the one side. You can do a figure eight. You can do uh, different patterns. Uh, this mic has a couple of different patterns it can have. So the more money that you pay for a microphone, uh, uh, the uh, usually they come with a little more bells and whistles. Uh, this is this is this is the value of a probably uh, ten SM58. So that's why I'm. You see when I'm like, okay, nobody touch that. <laughs> I'm so careful. I'm so careful with uh, with that with that mic. So but the home podcaster wouldn't necessarily have this mic. Wouldn't wouldn't really need it. You yeah. wouldn't need a you wouldn't need a mic that fancy for uh, to be a home podcaster. Okay. You play several instruments, correct? Uh, what are the instruments? That, well. Well, what are the instruments you played on on your songs so far? Um. A guitar, uh, a little bit of keyboard, um, I guess harmonica. I played <laughs> harmonica. Yeah. Okay. There's a. Uh, there's. Have you got one handy? Um. There you go. Uh, so harmonica. Uh, I got this. Oh my gosh! I got this many many years ago. Um, didn't know myself uh, at the time. I just lucked out. I got one in the key of G, and maybe at the time I was, because I was quite young, someone said, oh, here, here's what you want. And I, because I think I said, what's the most popular one? And you, so you, when you buy a harmonica, you buy them in the different keys, because there's only, you know, there's, you know, there's only so many notes you can play. Uh, and so you'll see real harmonica players. I'm just a schmo with the, uh, the harmonica, but uh, enough to do a couple little uh, riffs on, on a couple of songs. But real harmonica players will have, 
you know, a kit and they'll open up and they'll be in different keys and uh, they'll, ha they'll have a whack of them in different sizes. But this little Marine Band one is more than fine. I imagine uh, in, the, in, the, in the mouth of uh, Bob Dylan, he could make it uh, pretty good. But you see that uh, it got used in a couple of, a couple of songs uh, of uh, Lunchbox Social and made its way into a couple of videos. Are there any instruments that you wish you played or you'd like to learn? Oh, I would have loved to have uh, continued on with the accordion. I was going to say, <laughs> like, wasn't that your very first yes. instrument? Uh, actually, no. Uh, what did just you play first? Pause. Okay, what have you got there? Okay, so when I was, I think, 10, it's 10 or 11, uh, I had seen, I, I know I, we talked about this, I seen my cousin's band playing up in North Bay and I got the, uh, the drummer, not of that band, but of another band that hung out with my, uh, with my cousins, uh, cause I was fascinated by, uh, by the drums, the drummer. And I got him to take me, uh, take me to a music store and bought me some, he bought me these, uh, drumsticks. These drumsticks are from 19... <laughs> 1975, I think oh, wow. he had. I haven't broke them. Uh, and this little practice pad. I was thinking I'd get myself a drone kit, but <laughs> I got this little rubber Porto practice pad. And uh, he taught me, you know, uh, just a little type of thing. And he said, okay, just do that for over and over, get really good at that. And so I did that for maybe a day <laughs> and then when I came back uh, when I came back uh, back to our, our farm the uh, neighbor up the up the road Wilfred he came up and uh, he, he got the sticks and he was already <laughs> and so I just gave up <laughs> so I he, he had never touched it before and he was already much better so I said well I'm not you're not be, meant to be a drummer I'm not meant to be a drummer but uh, um, did you ever take guitar, guitar lessons uh, what did you call it Guitar? <laughs> guitar. Did you ever take guitar lessons? Uh, I did. I took them for, uh, once I got that very first electric guitar that my, uh, that I went into the, bought at the pawn shop with my, uh, with my Uncle Rudy. Uh, I took them for uh, a half a year, maybe, maybe a year, but uh, it got to be too expensive for me. And uh, I just, uh, I, once I learned enough, I said, okay, I, I'm good enough. <laughs> So what? So what did you learn in guitar lessons? Like, were you learning chords? Were I was learning, learning, yeah, learning chords. Yeah. Um, it was the very first song and picking out notes. The very first song was "As Tears Go By." And, and, oh, I learned that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, then you should da, be in my da, band. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played it on my crappy classical guitar. Ah, uh, okay. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I, and then and then from that point on, because I didn't, I never really wanted to learn other people's music. I have no, no, no real interest. I, I know I know a handful of 
of cover songs. So rate, uh, and even on that very first lesson, I was like, oh, I really don't want to learn this Rolling Stones. <laughs> That's a fad. <laughs> Are they still around? Uh, I really just wanted to like learn the guitar to be able to, as I was already trying to write my own song. So then after a couple of songs, uh, uh, cover songs, he said, okay, bring, you know, you, you, you really don't want to do this, bring in your own songs and I'll help you with where you're wanting to, uh, you know, give you different ideas for, you know, the chords that you're using and where you might go with uh, the songs you're trying to write of your own. Mm. Let me bring you back to uh, the, the, your early drumming. <laughs> <laughs> your early drumming my early drumming and how you got into that yeah. i have to say you have the most incredible memory of anybody i know well i can't remember what i did yesterday but right. I, I can remember 1975 yeah okay so tell us take us back to 1975 and going to the music store and getting you know how you got those drumsticks and well when i watched uh God, I can't believe I can remember these names. Stefan. I remember Stefan in my cousin's band uh, uh, playing, but a friend of theirs uh, who's in another band, uh, uh, Steve Marlowe. Again, I remember the names. Uh, Steve brought me to uh, to the uh, to the music store to buy the uh, to to buy the the drum kit, uh, the drumsticks, and the, the portal pad. I it was it was it was such an. Uh, I felt so like in this music store, like, oh, I don't belong here. You know, this is, uh, actually, I still feel like that when I go to a music store, I don't belong here. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was that was a really overwhelming, uh, and such a, um, such this wonderful feeling. Like, I mean, here's this, this older guy who was like in his, uh, he was old guy, he was probably 23. <laughs> he was probably, yeah. and his old man. And you were how old? I was probably 10, I want to say, I want to say somewhere between 10, 11, or 12, but not more than 12. Okay. And, uh, and, but it was quite overwhelming, but I, like, there was just such this great feeling that, that he took the time uh, to take me to this music store and uh, get, get me those, and, you know, that he wanted to, like, it was like he, he's a musician and a really well-known drummer and he he wanted to like foster that into somebody else and i've uh i've never for i've never forgot that mm. that's uh that was a nice uh it was a nice and so i know sometimes i say oh my gosh what am i i spend my time telling people you know things about music that i've learned because i kind of want to pass that on uh, even if it's just some little something i like being the thought of being able to pass that on to somebody else who's 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 at at, at the beginning stage right and i guess that's the whole purpose of this podcast series right is you know you're sharing your expertise so that other people you know can learn from you oh i thought I thought the purpose was just to get rejected in, in some other format. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I don't get enough rejections. So I, I want to put this out onto YouTube and get and get lots of downloads. And get lots of downloads. Oh, <laughs> uh, but that's true. That you know, you're right. There's a, a definite definite part of of this is is uh, you know giving some suggestions and any little help and if 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 uh, the podcast helps even one person. If one person with one one uh, one some like learns a little bit of something, and I've already had people already say, "Oh, I'm already learning. I've learned things from your uh, from your podcast." So, because uh, I've watched podcasts, and um, I go, "Oh, that's a, either it's too detailed at too high a level," and I go, "No, no. I just I need it simpler. I need it. Uh, I, I want." Uh, uh, that's why I, I, I want to do a drill down into a couple of, of things, deeper dives into some 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 of the equipment because sometimes it's just too technical, and I want to try and make it a, a little bit uh, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. I think something else that people would be interested in seeing, uh, and hopefully this will be in a upcoming episode, is how you actually edit your videos, um, edit editing your music videos and taking people through that. So as much as you're an analog guy. Right, and you like doing and things. The videos old are all digital. The video is yeah. all, and and you you've 
really evolved, yeah. right? So I would challenge anybody <laughs> to go back and watch some of your first, first videos yeah. and then watch some yeah. of the ones that you yeah. put out recently and seeing the difference yeah, in, the, true. in the skill yeah. level and Thank the quality you. of the videos you yeah. put out. Uh, we can, we'll, that's something we can do in, uh, in next season, if there is a next season, we can, uh, we can spend time on, uh, on video editing because there is, and there's lots of, and it's not just video editing, we can talk about uh, just like planning a video. I mean, so much time and effort goes into planning the video, uh, the equipment that you need for, for uh, making a video. Uh, not just in the post-production, but just all the, because we would find out, oh, you know, we would go and record a video or sh a video shoot, and we go, oh, we didn't, we forgot that, oh, we forgot this, we forgot that. There's there's a lot of planning that goes to make a, a video go smooth. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I've been witness to that, <laughs> yeah. and the, you know, back of your your car full of uh, all the equipment and everything. Loaded down with yeah. stuff. And your checklist, yeah, the checklist. all the checklists that yeah. you have yeah. with everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so if people are thinking about making a music video, that you're a good resource for that as well. Good, yeah. good. What have you got there to tune your guitar, Leo? Oh, it's a snark. A snark? A snark. A snark. Uh... They're like only like 20 bucks. Like, oh my God, where have you been? Uh, like 20, 25 dollars at the most. But it uh, it really does. And you, now you see them on it. Like everybody has one now on their on their guitar, except for my bass player Rob, who just proceeds to always use mine and then forgets where it is. Um, but yeah, it and it it uh, it doesn't by vibrations in the uh, and not by the sound as opposed to the old school tuners that would hear the sound uh, uh, this just does the so you can put it anywhere on the guitar and just measures it by or tunes it by the vibrations in the wood I'm uh, I'm a uh, I'm, ded I'm dedicated to the craft <laughs> Episode 7, take 742. <laughs> you have no idea. How many takes we've done to, to close out this episode? <laughs> I've aged a couple of days. <laughs> at least a day. Yeah, at least a day. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so we were all kung fu fighting. We're all, not, no, well, surely yeah. not everyone was kung fu fighting. Well, you and I were kung fu kung, fighting. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so uh, this was a lot of fun. This yeah. was, uh, I enjoyed uh, episode 7. And so next will be episode eight. Uh, it'll be the last uh, episode of uh, this season. And we'll see if we get picked up for another season. Um, and then... Uh, and maybe some sponsors? And maybe some sponsors for all the, yeah. you know, all, all the hardware that I, I talk about and such. Um, but yeah, we ha I had lots, of, had lots of fun. And next episode, I'm not sure what we'll do. I think I might just pick a song and... Uh, and show how I put a particular song together or how it uh, how it came to be and talk about what I want to try and do in another season. Okay. All we'll right. See you next episode. See you next episode. Bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, they so missed all of that arguing. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you missed <laughs> five minutes of her yelling at me. <laughs> it's not yelling. She was yelling at me. <laughs>